Hi, everyone. Welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio and tonight's YouTube Live. I am so glad that you have joined me. If you are here watching the replay, thank you for coming by. I've got a fabulous project for you tonight. As a matter of fact, I'm going to encourage you to stick with me to the very end because I've got an alternate idea using tonight's box. Yes, we're going to be making a favor box, and these are going to make great gifts. This time of year with the holidays approaching, and even when it's not the holidays, you're gonna need boxes for different occasions. Perhaps you're gonna need favors for birthdays or weddings or even showers. And tonight I've got a great idea for you. And if you wanna talk about easy, this is the project. For those of you that are here with me live, hi, welcome. Remember, if you want to chat during tonight's live, you will need to sign into your YouTube account. That is your Gmail address. Also, please, couple housekeeping items I just wanna go over with you before we get started. Megan is my virtual YouTube assistant. You'll find her name in blue. If you're here during the live chat, it will be off to the side on the desktop computer. In addition to that, please remember that there is a slight delay between when you speak and when I'm actually hearing it. And when my head is down at the stamp table, it is super hard for me to try to catch all your comments and answer. That's why Megan's here to help interact. But rest assured, I come back after the live is over and I read every single comment whether you've watched the replay or you are here for the live. Super excited about tonight's project and we've got lots of things to teach you. In addition to the box, I'm gonna teach you some new techniques to use for this to kind of gussy it up. And like I said, make sure you stick with me to the end. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna turn the camera down, here we go. Let me just zoom you in and get you all set up. I wanna make sure you've got a nice view. I think that's pretty good. I got my fancy light on to give you a little bit more lighting. The very thing, first thing we're going to do is we are going to do some scoring. And I've already cut this. Now I'm going to tell you tonight after the live, I'm going to come down here with Megan and we're going to put down in the video description below the video. Because often people ask me, where are it? Where are the instructions? There's going to be a link there that will navigate you over to all the pictures and the cutting uh, directions and the supplies for tonight's boxes. So please, please check that link. I'm gonna be doing some scoring. Now I've already cut this. And for those of you that are wondering, it's four and a half by 11. You're gonna be able to make one whole box from a piece of cardstock. Cause I've got another little alternative that I'm gonna use the rest of that paper for. The scoring is super simple because I don't know about you, but I hate those funky directions like four and seven eighths and then six and three quarters and then seven and five eighths. It just makes it really, really hard. This is super easy. So I've done this so that you can make bunches of these. Now my trimmer has an extension arm on it. So I'm gonna kind of open that up because we're gonna need to go all the way across. I'm gonna do the score lines with you first. Now the first one is going to be at three and a half inches. So I'm gonna line that up here. My light blade here on my trimmer is my scoring blade. So I'm gonna just be doing some scoring three and a half inches. I'm moving over to the five inch mark and I'm gonna score. And then I'm moving over to eight and a half inches, which I'm all the way over here now. We're gonna score. And then one more at 10. Now I told you it was easy. And then here's the last one. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this. So now it's going the long way and we are gonna score it at the three inch mark. Let me just line that up. I wanna make sure that it's nice and straight. Nothing worse than a crooked box, right? Okay. That's it. Now I know it's going to be super hard to see those score lines, but that's okay. You've got the dimensions. And again, make sure you check that link down below. Now the very next step I'm going to do is, I don't know if you guys can see this little quadrant right here. We really don't need this. So I'm going to take my paper snips and I'm going to cut this away. And I don't know about you, but I can't do anything straight. For those of you really proficient with your paper trimmer, of course you can do it that way. So I'm just taking this off. That's going to leave us with this. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with my bone folder and I am going to crease up on all those score lines. Now, let me give you a very important tip. Whenever you are doing a 3D project, please, please reinforce those score lines. It is super, super, super important to make sure that your box, especially in this case, is gonna stand up really well. Now, what we're gonna do is we are gonna slit on those score lines from the bottom up to this top crease line to create those flaps for the bottom of the box. Again, if you're very proficient with your paper trimmer, you can certainly do it that way. So I'm gonna come up here and I've got these here and we're almost done. And then one more here. 
The other thing I want to do is oftentimes when I put my box together, these kind of can be persnickety, which means if I didn't cut them perfectly on the line, which you can see I didn't, that they don't, they kind of hang out. So let me give you a little bit of a tip. I come in here on an angle and it's nothing pretty, trust me. And I'm just going to cut those. That's going to make it a little bit easier for me to put my box together. Remember, these are going to be on the inside. Now, you can do both sides or you can just do one side. It's completely up to you. I'm just going to do one for right now. I'll probably come back and wish I had done two, right? This little flap right here is where we're going to end up putting the adhesive to put the sides of the box together. Now, while it's flat is the absolute best time for us to do some stamping. So I'm going to do some stamping. I'm going to say this is the inside, so I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to bring in some scratch paper to protect my work surface. I've got another box for you, so make sure you stick with me to the end of the video because you're going to love these. And I've got all kinds of ideas on how you guys can use these amazing favor boxes for gift ideas. I have pulled out the stamp that looks like this. Check this out. Isn't that fun, that wood grain? Now, this is from a stamp set that I think is kind of a good, well-hidden secret in the Stampin' Up! annual catalog. It's called Gallery Grunge. And again, very grungy images, but they make fabulous backgrounds. I'm going to use the same ink color as I've used cardstock. So this is crumb cake. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And you can see, whoop, I got some ribbon in there. Have you guys ever done that? I try blowing it off. It doesn't go anywhere. But in this case, it's going to be good enough. I'm going to ink this up by tapping. You can see that this is literally the same size as this ink pad. One of the other things that you can do is if you're worried about missing a spot like I am here, turn it face up and stamp it and ink it up this way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up and I am going to actually, let's start on this side. I'm a left to right kind of girl because that's the way you read. And then I'm going to stamp. Okay. This is grungy for a reason. It's supposed to be super, super easy. So I'm going to repeat that process. Now I've got one of these already done, so we don't have to do the whole thing together. But I want to show you how simple this is to line up. Don't overthink this stamp. A lot of times, you know, we want to get like really precise and make sure it's perfect. Not necessary. And I could just keep going. All right. But I've got one that's finished. So let me just stick that stamp right off camera. I'm going to close this up because we're not going to need this again. I'm going to set that off to the side. All right. So the one that I have finished is right here. Now, you can see that I did all the stamping, but I didn't cut off this little edge. So let me just come in here and we're going to cut this off. And then I'm going to show you how to put this box together. I probably should have done this before you guys join me. So please forgive me. And then we're going to snip this up. I like to stamp when the box is completely flat. It sure makes it a lot easier. Now, I'm going to give you a trick about assembling that I think that you're going to really enjoy. And one of the tricks is to make sure that you assemble your box while it's flat. And you're probably thinking, flat? Well, how do you assemble a box when it's flat? Because the box itself is going to be dimensional. So I'm going to give you a tip. And again, I'm coming in to reinforce all those little score lines. All right. This is where the adhesive is going to go. So let me grab my silicone craft sheet, because if you've watched my videos, you know I'm a big fan of this. Adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it, which makes it a great accompaniment in your stamp studio. I like to make sure that this little thing is in the back of my box, so it's not so obtrusive from the front. So basically, this is going to be the front of my box. I'm going to show you how this box can be made several ways. So I'm going to leave off a little something I'm going to add here later. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to open this up and I'm going to use tear and tape. Now you can use liquid glue as long as it's strong. I'm going to recommend that your adhesive is nice and strong like tear and tape. You do not want to skimp on this part. Boy, there's nothing more embarrassing than when your 3D project falls apart. You're going to want to rub or burnish that paper into the cardstock because then I'm going to use my paper piercing tool attachment on my take your pick tool and I'm going to remove that paper backing. Now here was a, here is the step I was going to talk to you about, about putting the box together flat. Okay, here we go. Ready? This is going to go in and this is going to fold right on top of it. If you have scored it correctly, you literally can put it together flat. Isn't that slick? So remember I said this is going to be the back, which is where the little notch is. And then all we have to do now is close up the bottom. So those are those side slits. And you can see why I wanted to kind of angle those off in my original box. I just got lucky on here. They're perfectly even. And then all we have to do now is adhere the bottom. So I'm going to add some tear and tape here. 
I would recommend on your box that you go ahead and add a couple strips just to save a little bit of time. I'm just going to do one strip with you, but make sure you heed my instructions here. You want to make sure that your box is well enforced and strong enough to be able to hold up to the contents you're going to place inside. Now, these kind of favorite boxes are great for birthday parties. They're great for bridal and weddings. They're also great for showers. Now, oftentimes I have a hard time getting my hand inside, so here's a little trick. Take your bone folder and kind of rub, and that's gonna burnish this, because you certainly don't wanna press on this too hard and then collapse your box. So we've got this here. This in itself, adorable, we're gonna decorate it. But today, I'm gonna go a step further, because I know what I wanna put in here is gonna be very tall, and I didn't want it to kind of hang out the back, so I wanted to finish it. So let me show you what I did next. I have another piece of cardstock here, and I stamped this one before you joined me. This is three and a half inches by six inches. And I'm gonna layer that right inside here on my box. Not only does it hide this, which really is not that important, because you know you can put shredded paper and all your good stuff inside, but it's also great when you want to use something inside that's tall. So I know weddings, a lot of people like to include some um, succulents or small plants. You can certainly fit those inside. Just make sure you protect the cardstock. So what you're gonna do now is I'm actually gonna put a little bit of liquid glue, but I wanted to show you how you can use it without it. So I've got my multi-purpose liquid glue here. I like to get it started because I wanna make sure it doesn't come out in a clump. Now my silicone craft sheet, once this dries, I can rub it right off, it will not stick. So I know this is probably going to be difficult to see in the video, so bear with me. I'm adding a little bit of glue here. The one thing about this glue is it's very, very strong, so you don't have to go crazy with it. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick up this little piece here, and I'm going to slide that right down inside. And glue gives you a little bit of wiggle room, doesn't it? So you can kind of shift it around. And I'm pressing my hand down inside the box to make sure that my glue is going to be stuck to the back portion of my box. This is why I wanted to stamp it all the way around. I wanted to have a nice presentation and be finished. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna slide this off to the side and let's decorate this and this is the best part. Now, in addition to this really cool, simple box, I am gonna teach you a technique that you may not have seen before. And actually, it kind of happened by accident. I'm gonna be using a scrap piece of crumb cake cardstock, same color as this. Now, this is where the fun comes in. I've pulled out a leaf image because this one particularly is going to be fall. Remember, I've got another one for you. This leaf image comes from a stamp set called Colorful Seasons. I really like this because literally it can carry you all through the year. There's some really fun font greetings here as well. There are coordinating dies for this set, but not for this particular image. Now, don't let that scare you, okay? It's all right. I'm gonna use Versamark ink. And I don't know about you, but fall always kind of screams those fun, rich tones. So I decided I wanted to do a little bit of embossing. Now bear with me one second. I'm moving things around here on my desk to make a little bit of room. And I'm gonna bring in my copper embossing powder. And I'm gonna open this because I wanna make sure that it's good and ready when I do some stamping. And I'm gonna use my Versamark ink. So this is kind of a watermark, invisible ink is what I call it, an invisible ink, and embossing powder is going to stick to it. So I'm going to stamp that right on top of here. I'm going to close this up. Boy, is that important when you're powdering, because it will stick right on top of there. I'm going to lift, make sure that's close by, and then I'm going to bring this over here. I work over a coffee filter, and I'm going to sprinkle very generously. I don't, don't worry, because most of that's going to go all back inside that container. So there we've got our image. Now, I get a lot of people who ask me, well, how do you get it in there? So pinch and then just pour. The great thing about this technique of using these paper coffee filters is that there is little to no waste whatsoever. And you can get literally hundreds of images from one embossing powder. This one just happens to be the copper. I also like to keep a Swiffer. Great tip for you when you're heat embossing, especially like me. I live in Florida, so the ceiling fan's going. I can get all that stray powder up off my work surface with one of these Swiffer cloths, love that. All right, now we're gonna heat set that powder. And this is the heat tool. I've got one already finished for you, but for those of you that are new to embossing, I'm gonna start and just kind of walk you through this. I'm gonna turn the gun on. You're gonna notice that the tip is encased. It helps to retain the heat. 
which means if you're going to make multiples of these images, it's going to go really quick. I recommend you hold the gun fairly close and that you keep it moving. I like to make sure I don't scorch it because, you know, you can kind of daydream while you're doing this. But what's going to happen is the powder is going to turn. Do you see it starting to turn? To a coppery, foily finish. Pretty, huh? We'll do that on the whole impression. And when it's all finished, guess what? It's going to look like this. Now, here is the technique I want to teach you. And I'm going to move the camera in closer so that you can see. There we go. Now I'm going to protect my work surface because this technique is going to involve alcohol-based markers. Now, I never tried this before using alcohol-based markers on colored cardstock. And I literally did that squeal thing. I was so excited with how it turned out. Now I'm sliding over my markers if that's what you hear. I'm going to be using three different colors to get a beautiful palette here for this leaf. So I'm going to be using the Cajun Craze Combo. I've got the dark and the light. Now I've got a leaf completely finished for you, but I want to show you how I accomplished it so that you can create one at home. Typically, I like to use the very fine point of my marker, especially for these small areas. But I found on the colored cardstock that it absorbs the alcohol in the ink a lot faster. So I like to use the thicker tip. So I'm just going to do the center section here. I'm going to add a little color here and a little color here. No two of these are going to look alike. And then I'm going to come in with the lighter. This is Cajun Craze, and I'm going to come right over it. And I'm going to pull that out. Unlike the white and the vanilla cardstock, where you can actually kind of see where you're going, this really kind of blends in really, really well. <clears throat> Excuse me. The next I'm using here is, oh, I kind of did these out of order. That's okay. This is the Cajun, Cajun Craze. This was the Calypso Coral. All right, and now we're going to work this one down here. I'm going to tell you else, something else I've learned about alcohol markers. It will literally cover your embossing. So if you're done silver, make sure that you actually don't touch it. Otherwise, it will change the color. So I'm going to come back in here. This is the light, and I'm going to kind of blend those in. And now I'm going to switch over to the pumpkin pie. Again, I've got my dark here and I'm working up. Let me fill these in for you. Wait until you see the finished one. You're going to be wowed. This is even something that the kids can do with you simply because you can't mess it up. And then here's my light and I'm going to come back over these and I'm going to run up those colors and kind of blend them together. All right. It takes the alcohol a few minutes for it to evaporate. And when it's all finished, I used my scissors, which was really, really easy, and I got this. Isn't this stunning? One of the reasons you want to protect your work surface is because alcohol markers will bleed through the paper. I didn't think I would get such a stunning result on colored cardstock, but this, I just think it looks real, doesn't it? Isn't that pretty? All right, so I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to move those alcohol markers out of the way as well. And now what we're going to do is we are going to decorate this box. So here's the box here. I'm going to move you out a little bit more. Isn't that neat? I thought you guys would like that. All right. Next thing I decided to do is I wanted to add a little something behind this. So I brought out this copper trim ribbon. Really pretty, gorgeous metallic finish. But are you ready? This is what else it does. Watch. You can stretch it. I know. Who would have ever thought that this mesh ribbon could be so fun? And then all I did was kind of pull it and stretch it. This is about six inches. And then when I was all finished, I got this. Isn't that neat? So that's gonna give me a little bit of a palette behind here to make this a little bit more interesting. So we're gonna go ahead and use that behind our leaf. Wait till I show you what's gonna go in here. I'm gonna flip this over. I'm coming back to my silicone craft sheet because I think it's gonna be a little bit easier for you to see because of my work surface. And I'm gonna use a combination of regular dimensionals and mini dimensionals to adhere this. You're going to want to be generous with these, and I'll show you why in just a moment. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off those paper backings. I'm going to use that paper piercing tool attachment. That kind of corrals them all in one place. Isn't that wonderful? Love that. This now is going to go on top of here. So I'm going to kind of center that mesh where I want it. And then I'm going to put my leaf on here, and I think I'll go on this angle here. And I'm going to tack this down. It's going to stick it right here to the mesh. Now, a couple things you can do. You can use liquid glue on the back, or in my case, because you're all here watching with me, we don't wanna wait for it to dry. I'm gonna use glue dots. 
I always call this paper crafting surgery. So we're gonna add a few on here. I'm gonna put one here and one here. Typically I would use liquid glue only because I know it's gonna be really, really strong and it's gonna hold up really well. Glue dots are strong and it does work as you can see. We're not done. I wanna show you one other really neat thing to add to this. The first thing I'm going to do is grab some Cajun Craze cardstock. Now I chose that simply because it worked really well with the alcohol-based markers here and it brought in some color coordination. And I've got my early espresso ink pad and I've brought in the words enjoy. And this is from a stamp set that was uber popular last year in the fall and I'm loving it. It's called Country Home. You're gonna be able to find all these products that I'm using tonight in either the current Stampin' Up! annual catalog or the holiday catalog. And if you don't have a current demonstrator, I would love to send you complimentary copies. Head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on contact me. So I'm gonna ink up the word enjoy and I'm gonna stamp that here. Okay, so we've got that here. Put my stamp right off camera. Let's close that up because an open ink pad around here is always dangerous. This fits perfectly in the classic label punch. So I'm gonna turn this upside down and you're probably thinking, well, that's gonna be way too big. Yeah, I know, but wait till I show you something. So we're gonna punch that out. So there's our greeting. Now, here's the best part of this. Do you see this punch? Do you know that you can make custom sized labels from this? I'm taking this and I'm sliding it right back inside. Look, do you see how we can make it as big or as small as we want? So I'm gonna switch hands because I'm right-handed. So I'm gonna turn the punch to make it a little bit easier for me. I'm gonna try to keep my head out of the camera. So try to line this up and there we go. We've got our smaller greeting here. But I wanna show you one other thing you can do with this punch. Let's just assume for a second that we had punched our greeting one more time. And let's say we don't really want it to look like this. We want it to be a banner tip. So we're gonna come in on the left side versus the right side, which is what we've just done. And look what happens when you punch it out. You get the perfect little banner tip. So isn't this fabulous? Two ways to use this punch, different than it's intended, which really expounds on the use, isn't it? It's wonderful. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this one and I'm gonna take myself a glue dot because again, that's quick and easy. And I'm gonna pick up my greeting and I'm gonna add that here on this side. I think I'll add one more here in the center because we wanna make sure that's good and stuck. Don't ever skimp on your 3D projects. Always make sure you're using enough adhesive. And then right before you joined me, I made a simple double loop bow with a strand of 12 inches of burlap ribbon. Last week, I showed you four ways to make bows and knots using ribbon. And if you didn't see that, head over to my YouTube channel here and check on that. So glue dot once again, because you know, we always wanna make it look finished and pretty. And I'm gonna tack that right down here near the top. Now, ready how we're gonna use this? Okay, number one most favorite thing in the whole wide world is chocolate. I love chocolate. My number two most favorite thing in the whole wide world are marshmallows. This is a small cellophane bag. Stampin' Up! does not sell this size, but if you don't have this, consider using um, saran wrap or plastic wrap cinched it with the same type of burlap thread here. That's gonna go here. And then last but not least, I used one of the clear envelopes and I put in some grain crackers because uh, every girl that I know who loves chocolate really does like s'mores as well. So we've got this adorable s'mores packet here. Isn't this fun? This would be great for Girl Scout troops for the fall. They would be great favors for fall festivals or for friends and coworkers at work. Think of the things that you can do with this outside of this theme. Now I've got one more for you because I promised you an alternative idea and I'm gonna show you a real great tip about this one as well. So here's our fall one, but you know, Christmas is coming. So how about a Christmas one? Is this not adorable? Exact same box. So instead of stamping it, what I did is I added designer series paper here and here. Again, there'll be a link down in the video description when we're all done tonight to give you all the pictures and the cutting dimensions for this project. This is holding four Swiss Miss cocoa packets. They fit perfectly down inside. So you can see how generous this is, but you might be looking at this going, that cup is so cute. Where did you get that? Let me show you. 
It's the Cup of Christmas bundle. So it's the stamp set and there are coordinating dies. So that's how they die cut these images. The one reason I love this stamp set is it's photopolymer. And are you ready for this? The cup image, these two, they're reversible, which means you can flip them over and your cups can go in either direction. So you can have handles on either side. Absolutely love that. The dies did all the work. But did you notice here? Did you see my whipped cream? Mm -hmm. I'm going to move you in a little closer and I'm going to give you a little tip about this. It is not part of the stamp set or the dies. Do you want to see what I used? I actually used this. This is the scalloped tag topper punch. I took a piece of cardstock. I slid it in there and believe it or not, this is what's underneath my cup. Isn't that amazing? And then of course I added some Wink Estella because I love shimmer. But I also want to show you that the pretty label punch could be um, worked as well. So just trim off the excess. And again, you can have your whipped cream go in any which way. But really a great way for you to look at your punches in a way they're probably not originally designed for. Now, a little spoiler alert for you. This cup of Christmas bundle is going to be the focus of my card making kit for October. So you're going to want to make sure you hang here with my YouTube channel and subscribe so you don't miss all the things I'm going to be sharing. I've got lots of projects with this adorable stamp set as well. So what will you use this for? I would love to know. Isn't this super cute? Now let me flip the camera around and give you some other suggestions for this. Now, birthday parties. Let's think of the things you can do with these. If it's a child's party, think of all the small things that would fit inside. You've got tattoo kits, you've got yo-yos, you've got small little prizes that can fit inside there. You don't have to put the panel in the back if you don't want to. You can tie up the contents in a cellophane bag and stick them down inside. Like I said, wonderful for weddings and favors too. The ideas are endless and it's a great gift idea. And it's sure gonna make your holiday season more personal. Think of all the things that you can use them for. Now, before we go, I wanted to take one second and let you know about an amazing offer that's ending on September 30th. Stampin' Up! has a buy three, get one free designer series paper promotion. There are 10 designer series papers on the list if you buy three, you can choose a fourth one absolutely free, but it's only good for a few more days. That's September 30th. I don't know about you, but I can't believe that's next week already. You can get those products over on my website, at least stampstudio.com. And while you're there, make sure you click on that rewards tab because a minimum $25 product order before shipping and tax entitles you to exclusive and generous rewards. As a matter of fact, Live with Lisa is a private demonstration tutorial event that I do for my customers, and it only requires a $25 order, and it's coming up this Thursday. I sure would love to have you join us. I wanted to let you know, too, that I would love to have you subscribe, like, and share today's video with your crafting friends. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube. It sure helps us. I wanted to thank Megan for all of her hard work. And I want to also tell you that I will be back live with you. I'm looking over at my calendar. I want to make sure I get the date right. Wednesday, October 9th. You are not going to want to miss this project. I have been working on it, and I am thrilled to share it with you. It's going to be using the Cup of Christmas bundle, and you're not going to want to miss it. So make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so that you don't miss the notifications and you can be here for all the fun. Head over to lisastampstudio.com, sign up for my newsletter, scroll all the way down where it says want more ideas, and I'll send you a weekly tutorial absolutely free, no frills. I would love to see your feedback about today's project. I hope that you've enjoyed it and you'll make bunches of it because it's super easy. I look forward to being back here with you live soon. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.